Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about count control loops, right? So we've seen conditional loops. Now we're going to see how to write a count control loop, which means a counter-based loop. So a for loop will help us write counter-based loops. The for loop can be written in a couple of different ways. Okay, For variable in the square bracket syntax that kind of shows us this is a list of values. How do we step through a list of values? So I'm going to go into our Python tutor so we can actually visualize um, and step through code. So let's go to start visualizing your code and let's see if we have code. We can copy or I can just write that code. So let's just write that code. Okay, so here, let's do so def main. We'll just type it in here. And we're just going to write a very simple for loop for, um, let's say, num in and a list of values, 23, 34, 45, 87. We have four values for num in the list of values, print num. That's it. Then we're going to write main. So let's see how this program works, right? Visualize execution. And we start the program there. We say next and main gets created then main is going to get called we go next this for num in 23 watch what's going to happen here num gets created and num gets set to 23 the first value in the list next then we print 23 next num becomes 34 the next value in the list so we go through this loop how many times four times Okay, every time num takes on the value of the next item in the list and we print it. Next, we print 45. Here it goes one more time. We have 87 in the list. Next, num becomes 87 and we print num, which is 87. Now, the number of items in my loop is done. So we're going to quit and we're going to come out of there. So that's a for loop with a list of values. Now, how else can we write this code? This code can be written in multiple ways. You can even use strings here. Okay, so I could use for maybe um, a list of fruits. We can do that. Banana. And so num doesn't make sense. So I'll call it, I'll change my variable name, even though it can be num. It just doesn't make sense. So I'll call it fruit. For fruit in the list of values. Now, if we go through and do the same thing, main gets executed. For fruit in apple. So here's my fruit variable that gets created, it takes on the value apple. We print fruit. Then we print pear, which is the next value. Then we print banana, which is the last value, right? So we can do different things with this. What if I want you to just try that in your code? So let's take that out. Okay. So that's the for in list. Okay. So you can have four in list. It could be numbers or it could be strings. Now let's take a look at the range function. There's something called a range for num in range five. What does that do? Which is what we have here. We have count starting at five for num in or for i, not num, for i in range. Let's try to do something else here. Let's just print i and see what we get. So for i in range of count, print i. What does that do? Let's take away this for right now. Okay, so all we are doing is, we have a couple of unused variables, but we'll go back and use them in a minute. For i in range count, count is five. So what does this print? It prints zero, one, two, three, four. So first time i is zero, print zero. Then you go back, i becomes one. And it checks every time to see have I reached count. Count is five. So zero, no, I have not reached count. We print zero. I becomes one. We print one because it's not count. Two, we print two, three, and four. When it gets to five, we say, oh, we've reached count. So we come out of there. Okay. There are a couple of other things we can do with the range. For example, range can take different types of parameters. So we're going to try some of these. How about if I try this one, range of 2, 9, what does that do? So you go back here and say range 2, 9. We'll use count later. So i is going to take on the values 
from starting from two till nine. That's what that says, but not nine included. Nine does nine is not included in it, right? Okay, so it increments by one. So first it's two, then it's three, then it's four. So it's like a counter. It helps you count things. In there, you can do whatever you want inside that for loop, right? If you have, if you are going through and trying to find the sum of things, or you're trying to find um, the maximum of a list, or whatever that may be, we can do different things with it. What if I don't want to increment by one? What if I want to increment by two? That's what that third parameter does. So we start at two, then we go two, four, six, eight. Every time we increment by two until we get to that number, not including that number. What else? There are a couple of things here. What if we start at a higher number and what if we want to go down? So backwards. So if I start at 12, for example, and if I say stop at nine, let's stop at a smaller number, seven. So it's going to start from 12. Incrementing it by two is not going to help us. We want to go backwards. So we want to increment by, decrement by two, which would be add a minus two to it. So if you do that, we start from 12, 10, eight, and then one go below that because we want to stop at seven, right? So starting point, stopping point, one before that, and whether we go up or down. That's what the range function does. Now, in there, you could do whatever. Let's say count is five. Let's go back to our original plan. Five times I want to do something. Maybe I want to read five numbers from the user and find the maximum of the five numbers, right? So this for loop is going to execute five times. In there, what do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to read five numbers from the user. So user num equals int input enter a number. Okay, so we're going to read a number. And we're going to say if I have max as a variable starting at zero, if user num if user num greater than max, then what happens? Max becomes user num. So if the number that the user enters is greater than max, then we replace max with user num. Go back and get the next number. Go back to the counter, see if the counter is uh, five. It's not, after the first time it'll be one. So first time it's zero, we go in, we get a number, we check if that number that the user enters is greater than max, we replace max. Counter becomes one because we start at zero, right? Counter becomes one. Then we do the same thing. Counter becomes two. We read the next number. So I is just a counter in this case. Then when we come out, what do I want to do? I want to print the largest in the, in the list is, and you print max. That's, give, that's going to give me the largest number in the list of numbers the user enters. So you're going to print here a message that says enter five numbers and I will give you the max. That's what this program is going to do. I'm using a for loop, a count control loop, because I want to run the loop five times. So enter a number, 34, 56, and it's going to say that five times. Because my count is at five. One more time, and it says largest in the list is 98. If I change my count to four or three, then the loop is going to execute that many times. That's really what a count control loop is. And that's what the for loop is all about. So that's how we use the for in range loop.